my name is Noah and I'm your host for our first construction video. Today we'll be looking into steel construction here at Phoenix Ironworks, a large steel fabrication shop in the St. Barnabas area of Winnipeg. I'm here with Mr. Ryan Renaud of Phoenix Ironworks. Hi Mr. Renaud, thanks for having us. You're very welcome, anytime. Can you tell us a bit about Phoenix Ironworks, what we do here and what we're about to see today? And this is a structural steel fabrication shop. And in this building, we uh, primarily do structural steel, which is your large members, your beams, channels, angles. It happens to be that we are a little bit slow with the structural end of it right now. We're doing more miscellaneous stuff. And miscellaneous would be stairs, hand railing, um, mm -hmm. custom hand railing for, for homes or, or business hand railings like what we're building right here on this table. We have some CNC equipment, which we'll walk around a little later and we'll show you some of that stuff, okay? Okay, uh, awesome. What type of uh, jobs do you got here? We've got about 15 employees in the shop. They're not all welders, so we, we have specific employees that run CNC equipment, like a plasma table, or CNC drill, and a saw line. We have uh, a, an individual or a couple that do strictly painting, and shipping, uh, but the mo most of the guys in the shop are what we call fitter welders. So these are the guys that read a blueprint, and and from that blueprint they can build structural items, whether it's beams or, like in this case, a handrail. So they're they're able to understand, look at a blueprint, and understand what's asked of them on that blueprint, and then. A lot of them just do tacking, so they use the welding machine just to tack the parts together, and then that piece of um, that piece of materials may be moved on to a fellow that just does the welding of it. And all of the welders here are CWB certified, Canadian Welding Bureau certified. They have to be to do structural welding. Okay. Mm, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. What's the biggest safety hazard in the shop like this? Well. In a shop like this, like, like many other construction areas, this happens to be a structural steel fabrication shop, and we have many hazards in the shop. But prior to uh, dealing with hazards, we have to make sure that all of our employees have the proper protective equipment, like hard hats, safety glasses, steel-toed boots, gloves to protect your hands, and there's a lot of specialty type of safety items that the guys can use. There's hearing protection, there's full face shields, there's clothing protection, and high visibility is, is, is used as well. So as long as you provide all of these safety related items to your employees, you know, we should be able to keep them fairly safe. You know, things do happen occasionally, but you know, we stay on top of it and uh, the safety record is quite good here. Well, what's a specific safety um, thing for, like, let's say, welders? Well, with welders, most importantly is that they wear a, fa a welding shield, okay? Just like, just like this one right here. So this, this is a welding shield. It's got a clear lens on the inside so that they can just lift up their helmet and they can look through the clear lens. But this is the dark lens, which allows you to look at a, the physical weld and, it do, and you don't hurt your eyes, okay? Oh. So that goes down when you're welding, and it's just a helmet that you put on your head. Very important that you have a face shield because welders do a lot of grinding. So there's a lot of sparks flying when they're, when they're grinding on material, whether they're cleaning the material or grinding it to do a weld prep. Grinding uh, it happens all the time in the shop. So when someone's grinding, that's why it's important that everyone's wearing safety glasses because you could be walking by an area that someone's doing some welding or grinding and sparks are flying in every direction. So you always have to be very wary of, uh, of that. And so wearing stuff like this is very important. Yeah. yeah. The, the welding flash and sparks are pro probably the most predominant uh, issue with, with welding. You know, you certainly don't want to look at a, uh, directly at the weld. Yeah. You know I mean, it's just you. Yeah. What are um, some safety hazards in material handling? That's a good question. In this shop here, we have seven cranes. They're all big overhead cranes. And if you look up here, you'll see each crane has two five-ton hoists on it. So each hoist can lift five tons. That's 10,000 pounds 
or combined, that's 20,000 pounds. Uh, at the moment, we don't have a lot of heavy structural steel in here, but quite often we'll have beams, just one beam that could weigh three, four, five thousand 5,000 pounds. So it's very important that all of our employees know how to safely operate these cranes. They're probably the most important piece of equipment in the building is the cranes because everything is handled with the cranes. You have to be aware of how to control the crane. You have to be very aware of how to sling. And when I say sling, how to chain up a beam to maybe stand it or to lay it down, to safely lift it so that it's balanced correctly. And anytime you're gonna move with the crane, you want, prior to moving, you wanna make sure that the area that you're gonna be walking in is safe. You don't wanna be operating the crane and then, and then run, you know, run into a skid or something. And you never ever lift a, a, an item any higher than you have to. You always keep it low, okay? It may be that you have to walk with the beam and you're gonna hold the beam in one hand and use the controller and you're gonna move that item across the floor, right? So you never go higher than you, than you actually have to. You wanna always be able to control that item. I didn't know that. Right? Thank you very much for these safety tips. They're probably very important. Yes, they are, and you're very welcome. And uh, I've been in this industry for a long, long time, and I can tell you one thing. If you decide just down the, a few years down the road from now that you want to get into the fabrication industry, it's a great career. It's a great, uh, great job, career. You learn a lot of things. Um, a lot of the things that you learn in a shop like this, you can take home and apply to doing projects of your own, in, you know, in your own home or in your own garage. So very important. I definitely like it. I'm probably, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider it. Okay, great, great career. We are going to walk around the shop and we're going to show you a bunch of different machines and equipment that we use in the shop to get, to make parts for our fabrication. Awesome, let's go. Yeah, you'll enjoy it. Oh my gosh. Cool, eh? So what is this piece of equipment and what is it used for? This is called the CNC controlled plasma plate cutting table. The table is nine feet wide by 25 feet long, so we can put we can put plates that are eight feet wide by 24 feet long right inside the plate, and it's all CNC controlled. So whatever shape that you download on the CNC, it will cut, and it can cut from from one sixteenth thick material to two inches thick. It's amazing. It's very fast. It's very accurate. It's it's called a water table as well, and the water is there for two reasons. It muffles some of the noise because it's quite a, a loud machine and it controls some of the dust particles that get into the air due to the, the burning effect of the, of the plasma. But that, I mean, that's the only reason that there's water in the table. It, it, it doesn't burn under the water, it's above but just below. Uh, but it's very efficient. Um, it's an expensive piece of equipment, but most of the shops that, uh, that are larger shops uh, have a machine like this. Wow, I never seen plasma. This is pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's quite well. It's quite uh, it's quite neat. And there's actually handheld plasma as well. Yeah. Cool. What kind of material are you putting on this? Well, that's a good question. This plasma machine burns all different types of material: stainless steel, aluminum, and mild steel, which is most predominantly mild steel. The parts that we're cutting on this machine are parts that were that are used in the fabrication in the shop. So we might be building. A, a large structure that has some plate connections. So this plasma machine will burn these these plate connections with holes. Um, it saves a lot of time. You don't have to do any layout of holes. You don't have to do any manual punching of the holes. Everything that comes off the machine is is finished, ready to go directly on the, on the main part. That's really helpful. Yeah, yeah, it's very very good. Yeah. This is a cool job if you like working with your hands. Oh, I agree. It's, uh, it's very hands-on, this type of industry. Very hands-on, yes. What is this piece of equipment and what do you use it for? Okay, this is uh, one of our newest acquisitions. This is a CNC-controlled saw and multi-head multi drill. So when the material comes down through the rollers here, we get the leading edge of the saw and we trim the leading edge of the, of the, of the material for a beam, for example, to make it nice and square. And then it continues running through. Remember, this is all controlled, computer controlled. 
and it runs into the second machine that has three access drill that can drill into the web, so vertically and horizontally from both sides. So if you're going, running a beam through it, they can drill all three planes at the same time. And because it's CNC controlled, it slowly inches the beam through at the location that a hole may be needed in the web or in the flange. It'll stop, the drill, the drill starts up, runs through, backs away, creeps along again, stops, runs through, and it just continues like that until it gets to the end and does a final cut and the material continues down and off to the fitters to work on. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Very quick. Very yeah. big machine. Too. Very big machine, yes. Yeah. Here's the material here. See, those are the beams that would go onto this. And, and this can take up to 60 foot length of beams, which is the maximum length that we buy. So we take that long 60 foot beam with the crane, and we set it on the rollers, and we have little guide rollers right here. We bring the beams tight to the guide rollers, and then the, roller, the rollers are powered, and they just drive through to the leading edge of the saw, like I explained, and then the saw cuts through and then continues on to be drilling and sawing. Yeah. So this is the CNC drill. When the beam comes into the drill, the drill adjusts itself to the width and, and clamps the beam solid against this drive roll right here. This controls the direction that it moves and the distance that it moves. And, and there's three, three axis drill. You've got the vertical drill right here and you have a horizontal drill there and a horizontal drill there. And depending on where the hole is located, determines which drill comes in and starts to drill. Awesome. This is a 13 16 diameter drill bit that has holes right in the drill bit. And the, 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 the cooling, it's a mist cooling, literally dry, goes down the inside of the drill bit and comes out right at the hot point of the drill bit. It's not a flood cooling, it's a mist cooling, but comes right through the drill. Start working here. Do I become an apprentice or a laborer for this? Well, it all depends on uh, what position that you've come to apply for. Because uh, there are just labor jobs. You know, those would be the, you know, uh, the employees that uh, maybe work in the uh, prep department, maybe working on uh, saws and, and iron, iron workers and, and drills. And then, and then you have the journeyman guys that are welders. And if in high school you're at a trade school and you can learn how to weld, that would help you a lot in coming to this industry because you'd already have a good knowledge of welding. So you could be hired here directly from school as a welder. You would have to be CWB certified, which would happen in the shop anyway, but that, that doesn't matter right now. But, but yeah, so there are laborer jobs. As far as apprenticeships, this shop doesn't typically run the apprenticeship programs, but there are shops that will, and they, it involves working directly in the shop and to some degree, outside in, in uh, maybe Red River College or something like that. But uh, yeah, they hire both, both types. Okay, cool. Yeah. What kind of pay rate do you get for, let's say, being a welder? Well, it varies from, from shop to shop. Um, some shops are non-union, some shops are unionized. Typically, the unionized shops get a little bit higher pay grade than the non-union shops. I don't understand why, but um, if you're a journeyman welder, you're a t full ticketed welder journeyman, you're, you know, your pay is going to be in the, uh, in the higher, the higher uh, 20s, lower 30s. Um, if you're just a, um, a junior welder and just starting out, you might be in the low 20s. But the pay grade is good. It's comparable with most of the other industries, you know, whether you're in plumbing or electrical. You know, the welding pay is, is quite comparable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. How do you get employees to work for you if there are so many other jobs out there? Yeah, you know what, it's, uh, the employees that typically come to a shop like this are interested in the, the steel fabrication end of it, or they have the welding skills already. A lot of times employees just drop off a resume. Sometimes we'll contact the colleges and ask if there's any uh, students that are finishing up in their, in their welding uh, trades, and, uh, and if so, maybe we get them to lead them to us, and then we get a resume from them. And, and then there's, like I said, walk-ins. Could be even a friend of a friend. Hey, I've got a son that's looking for a job, and he's handy and good, good with his hands and works well with others. So there's many ways that we hire you know, for a shop like this. Cool. What kind of training do your employees need? If you're going to be hired as just a general laborer, 
you don't really need any training at all. You because most of the training is done in house. We do a lot of in house training for you. But if you're going to come as a welder, certainly it's helpful if you've taken welding prior to whether it was in high school or you've gone to a college and learned how to weld. So uh, if you come to us as a welder and we can, you can show us that you do know, have the knowledge for welding, it makes a big difference as far as getting hired as a welder. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Mr. Renault, for having us. And good luck on your you all, You're very welcome. I'm glad you came down. I hope this is uh, insightful for you. And uh, maybe one day you'll be in this career. Maybe. All right. Thank you. Thanks for checking out the steel fabrication shop today. Thanks for watching.